Hello and welcome back to another tutorial. In the last episode we created an entity and today I'm going to be showing you how you can spawn that entity into your world, both with natural generation and spawn eggs. So let's start with the spawn eggs. In our common package let's create a new package called dot item and in here let's create a new class called custom spawn egg item. This is going to extend spawn egg item and we can hover over this and add a constructor. We can see that we have these unmapped parameters here so let's just rename them. Let's change the properties to properties and then make it a final item dot properties. Let's change this to secondary color and make it final and then change this to primary color and also make it final. And then let's change this to entity and make it a final registry object of entity type. And then we can press Control Shift O to import net.minecraft.item.item and registry object. Finally, let's rename these over here to properties, secondary color and primary color. And then we can just pass in null over here. Let's create a protected static final list of custom spawn egg item call it eggs to add and set it equal to a new array list like so then let's press Control shift o to import list and array list and that should fix the error then we need a private final lazy of something that extends entity type of any entity and we're going to call this lazy entity then let's press Control shift o to import lazy and in our constructor we can do this dot lazy entity is equal to lazy dot of and then we can do entity colon colon get. Then let's do eggs to add dot add this. So now we've created our lazy entity supplier and added our egg to our eggs to add list. Now let's override get type and we can pass this as our MBT data. And all we have to do is return this dot lazy entity dot get. Next we need a behavior for when we use a dispenser with our items. So let's create a protected default dispense item behavior behavior is equal to a new default dispense item behavior and then we can open a scope and end with a semicolon and in here we can override dispense stack. Let's change this source to a source and this item stack to stack. Then inside here we're going to get the direction. So let's do direction direction is equal to source dot get block state dot get dispenser block dot facing. So now I'm going to get the facing property of our dispenser. And then we can press control shift O to import net.minecraft.util.direction. Next we're going to need our entity type. So let's do entity type of any type. And let's call this e type is equal to and we can open brackets and here we can put stack dot get item and we need to cast this to a spawn egg item and then we're going to put dot get type and then stack dot get tag so now we're going to be calling this get type method with the nbt data of our stack after we know what to spawn and where now we can actually spawn it so let's do e type dot spawn then we need to get the world so source dot get world then the stack null for the player since the dispenser is spawning it then we need to get the offset so source dot get block fuzz dot offset direction then we need to pass in a reason for spawning so we can do spawn reason dot dispenser then we need to ch check if the direction doesn't equal to direction dot up and lastly we can just pass in false and let's make sure to use the direction class instead of the variable. Next, we need to do snack.shrink1 to make sure that we actually remove the spawn egg from the dispenser. And next, we can return the stack that was passed in to the dispenser. And there we go, that's our dispense item behavior. We can also make this static to make sure that we're only creating one of these for all of the spawn egg items. Next, let's create a public static void called init spawn eggs. So in here we're going to create a final map of our entity type of any entity to our spawn egg item. We're going to call this eggs. I'm going to set it equal to obfuscation reflection helper dot get private value. Then we need the class to access, so our spawn egg item dot class. Then we need the instance, which is a null because this is a static 
and then we need the string of the handle, which you can get using the bot in our Discord. All you need to do is type exclamation mark mcp spawn egg item dot eggs. And as you can see, it gives us that spawn egg item dot eggs is field 195 987 underscore b so we can just copy that and paste it into here then we can press ctrl shift o to import java.util.map and that will fix our errors next we can loop through our final spawn egg item item in eggs to and and then all we need to do is eggs dot put then we need the entity type so item dot get type of null and then the item itself and then we need to register our dispense behavior. So let's do dispenser block dot register dispense behavior of our item and behavior. And finally, we need to clear everything from eggs to add. So let's do eggs to add dot clear. And there we go. That's our custom spawn egg class done. So now we need to call this in its spawn eggs in our main class. So let's create an at subscribe event of public static void on register entities we need to pass in a final registry event dot register entity type of any entity and we can call this event and in here all we need to do is custom spawn egg item dot init spawn eggs next let's create our item in our item init so after our example item we can create a public static final registry object of custom spawn egg item we can call this example spawn egg it's going to be equal to items dot register example spawn egg and then we need the supplier for the item so let's create a new supplier of custom spawn egg item then we need the registry object of the entity so we can do entity types in it dot example which is our entity. Then we need the primary color and the secondary color and then item.properties. So we can do new item.properties.group tutorial mod item group dot tutorial mod. In order to fix the error that we have here, we need to go into our custom spawn egg item and change this registry object to something that extends entity type. And that should fix the error. Now we need to pass in our two colors. All you need to do is Google color picker, then select a color, for example, this green, then copy this, go into here and put zero X, then paste the color in. And same thing over here, we can put zero X, then let's go for this purpley color, copy the hex code and paste it in here. And there we go, we've created our spawn egg. So now let's create the JSONs for the spawn egg. In our lang file, let's create item.tutorialmod, dot example spawn egg and set it to example spawn egg and in models dot item let's copy our example and paste it as example spawn egg dot json and then we can remove the textures and change it to item slash template spawn egg and that's actually it now we can launch the game so now if we open the game you can see we have our example spawn egg item and we can click it to spawn an entity and if we use a dispenser with it, we can also spawn an entity and it will use one of our spawn eggs. So next we're going to cover how we can spawn this entity in the world naturally. And all we have to do for that is just add one simple event. So in our events package, we can create a new class and we're going to create a new class called entity events. So then let's go into player events and just copy this event bus subscriber up to here and press control shift O to import it. However, we want to change the bus.forge to bus.mod. Then let's add a subscribe event called public static void on biome load. And then we're going to pass in a biome loading event event. And if event.get name is equal to null, we're going to return. So next we can do mob spawn info builder called spawns is equal to event.get spawns. And then we can do if events dot get category dot equals biome dot category dot the end so my mom's going to spawn in the end we have to do spawns dot with spawner then we pass in an entity classification so i'm going to do creature and then a new mob spawn info dot spawners with our entity 
types init.example.get. Then the weights are often it spawns the smallest group, so three, and the largest group, I'm also gonna put that to 10. So next we can remove the bus equals bus.mod and make this final. And then run the game. And now if we launch the game, we can see that the entities are spawning in the end. That's it for this video. If you need any help, join the Discord, and I'll see you next time.